Hey guys, this just dropped and most people are already misunderstanding what it actually does. This is not 3D, this is not camera rotation, and it is not magic. But if you understand how this node works with Quen Image Edit 2511, it completely changes how you generate turnarounds, character sheets, and consistent multi-angle images. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what the multi-angle node is doing, what the LoRa actually controls, and how to build a clean production-ready workflow that goes beyond public examples. No hype, no guesswork, just the correct way to use it. Today, we are looking at a game changer for camera control in Comfy UI. The Quen multi-angle node transforms how we interact with image editing models. Instead of typing out complex camera descriptors and hoping for the best, we now have a full 3JS interactive viewport directly in our workflow. This node acts as a visual bridge for the Quen Image Edit 2511 model. By dragging the colored handles in the 3D scene, you can adjust the azimuth, elevation, and zoom levels in real time. The pink ring handle controls your horizontal rotation from 0 to 360 degrees. The cyan arc handle manages your vertical tilt from minus 30 to 90 degrees, and the gold line handle handles your zoom and distance. Under the hood, this node is generating precise prompt strings that the Quen Multi-Angle LoRa uses to reposition the camera while maintaining perfect identity and lighting consistency. This is particularly powerful for product photography, character sheets, and storyboard artists who need consistent shots of the same subject from specific coordinates. Because this is built on the Quen 20B foundation, it handles spatial relationships and environmental lighting far better than traditional stable diffusion image-to-image -image methods. When you rotate the camera, the shadows and occlusions update to match the new perspective, rather than just warping the original pixels. For those running high-end hardware, like the 5090, this allows for a near real-time virtual photography studio right inside your comfy UI workspace. Now, before you go running off, this is a short video, but I strongly recommend you watch it all the way through. Not because there's a trick at the end, because if you misunderstand what this node is doing, you'll use it wrong and come away disappointed. The workflow is powerful, but only if you treat it correctly. Everything you need for this video is in the notes box. All the files, all the download links and the exact folder placements are there. We will go through them together. But if you want to pause right now and get set up, you can. Nothing is hidden, nothing is paywalled. This is a standalone release and I want it usable months from now. So let's quickly ground ourselves. You'll see links for the Quen Image Edit 2511 Diffusion Model, the Multiple Angles LoRa, the Optional Lightning LoRa, the Text Encoder, and the VAE. Every link is a direct download and every placement path is listed clearly. If you put those files in the wrong folders, the workflow will still load, but the node will do absolutely nothing. So don't skip that step. We'll still walk through it on screen so you can sanity check your setup. Now let's talk about the node itself. This multi-angle node is not rotating your image. It is not generating a three-dimensional model and it is not a camera in a traditional sense. What it does is generate a structured camera prompt string based on angle, elevation and zoom and then hands that string to the Quen Image Edit model through the LoRa. That LoRa is doing the heavy lifting. Without the LoRa loaded, this node is just producing text. And this part matters. The node only uses information that already exists in the image. If the back of a character was never visible, it's guessing. If the lighting is ambiguous, it's guessing. If the anatomy is unclear, it's guessing. So don't expect magic. This is controlled reinterpretation, not reconstruction. Because of that, this workflow is inherently experimental. Some generations will be excellent, some will be slightly off, and occasionally it will mess things up completely. That's normal. The goal isn't perfection on the first click. It's consistency across iterations. What I want to do now is run a couple of generations in real time. I'm using FP8 here because it's fast and great for iteration. You'll see just how quickly you can explore different angles. But, and this is important, FP16 is linked in the notes box for a reason. If you want maximum fidelity, cleaner textures and fewer artifacts, FP16 is the correct choice. It's slower, but it's more reliable. I'll show you both so you can decide based on your own hardware. So here I've loaded up an image of this woman in an art gallery and I've set multiple angles and run generations in the new multi-angle camera node. 
and this is generating in real time and as you will notice there are some issues you will see in the original generation the foot is visible and so the model is trying to figure out how that fits into the image and as you can see on one of the generations the model has failed to create the limb properly but the other generations are quite good and it's quite accurately tried to depict the foot and the position of the leg. Now it's not always perfect and you can see that but you can always try again, iterate and even edit the image. The other thing to mention here is that these are lightning quick using the lightning LoRa. Optionally you can disable the LoRa to get more high fidelity images. With a 20 step or what the developers recommend is a 50 step and you can raise the CFG. 3.5 works well without the lightning but experiment. Okay so next I will load up an image of this woman sitting at a dinner table and again I'm going to select at random some multiple angles and elevations and here are the generations and here you might notice that the railings and the orientation of the table and the girl has not always been accurately depicted but again it's a case of trial and error and playing around with it. So next I'll load up the BF16 model because I want to show you the full precision and here I'll load up a more photorealistic image. Let's work with Tom Hanks again, a face we will recognize so we can check for character consistency. And I'll run a few generations so you can see. The BF16 model does take a little bit longer to generate but from the results I'm not entirely sure if it's worth the extra overhead. If you need higher fidelity there's always ways to increase the fidelity including losing the lightning lower and a higher step generation. Okay so I want to show you something else now. The second workflow I'm about to show you is not something I've modified or cleaned up. This is the developer's own reference workflow straight from their github. I'm using it exactly as provided so you can see how the creator intended this to be used. Once you understand this pass you'll know how to extend it safely or when not to. This is not my invention. As you're watching these generations pay attention to what stays consistent and what doesn't. Faces usually hold up well clothing can drift, backgrounds can hallucinate, that's the trade-off. If you push extreme angles expect more variance. If you stay conservative results are much more stable. So that's the multi-angle node. It's not perfect, it's not 3D and it's not automatic. But used correctly it's one of the cleanest ways right now to generate controlled multi-angle images with Quen Image Edit 2511. Everything you need is linked below. Experiment, iterate and treat it like a tool not a shortcut. I'll see you in the next one.